The year is 1995. Riddick Bowe is the current holder of the WBO heavyweight title. Lewis, Bruno, hi, forget them. I'm the real heavyweight champion in the world. And I'm... Having lost the other major belts to Evander Holyfield two years prior, Bo is on a mission to reclaim what was once his. But before he can do that, a villain larger than life stands in his way. A man who has posed himself a threat to Riddick Bo in the past. A man who bathes in the hate of the general public. A man who is currently undefeated and looking to take over the heavyweight division. This man is Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Right now I'm here at this gym and you start jerking me around. I feel a hatred, a tremendous amount of hatred towards you. If it weren't the present time, if we were living in the Roman times, I would have killed you right there and then because of a dirty look that someone gives me. Welcome back to Boxing After Dark, where today we're going to be looking at Riddick Bowe versus Jorge Luis Gonzalez, a fight filled with so much hate and contempt, it makes Ali and Frazier's rivalry look like two best friends disagreeing over what birthday presents to get for each other. Let's get into it. Jorge Luis Gonzalez was a supervillain of boxing, a character purposely looking to cause huge upsets to the general public, thriving off of the hate of boxing crowds with a hairstyle so distinct that Don King looked like your average Joe in comparison. To many, Gonzalez was evil incarnate, someone who'd come out of the shadows to be a personal demon to bow. But he was much more. Gorge had humbled and taunted Riddick in the amateurs, before going on to do the same thing to the great Lennox Lewis and countless other amateur fighters. He was a threat to anyone, and he was far from quiet about it. Gonzalez has proven he's bad with everyone in the ring. Instead of knocking his opponents out early, Jorge toys with his enemies, standing with his hands by his waist, taunting them with the little English he knows. I love it when the audience starts to boo me. It riles me up even more. I'm the type of person that if I know that I rub you the wrong way, I'm going to do something to piss you off even more. If you don't like the way I laugh, I'm going to laugh louder just to piss you off. The fight, dubbed Mortal Enemies, was a long time coming. Gonzalez had left his home country of Cuba, gladly abandoning his family to continue his boxing career and cause mayhem in the heavyweight division. Riddick Bowe was who he wanted to fight the most. With pure hatred as his motivator for the fight, it was clear that this bout had no universe where it would be handled with professionalism and class. Bo, after having a short but powerful reign in the heavyweight division as the undisputed champion, was slowly leaving his prime. But if anything could bring back that hungry, animalistic version of him, the version that beat Evander Holyfield in 1992, it would surely be his fight against Gonzalez. Bad blood had been spilled from the moment they met in the amateurs, with Bo insulting Gonzalez's mother, trying to cut deep and get under his skin. It wasn't hard to tell they were both passionate, but Gonzalez was the much more experienced amateur when they met for the first time, and in retrospect, it was clear Bo never stood a chance. Now eight years had passed, and while Riddick had slowly matured, Gonzalez seemed to delve deeper and deeper into insanity. With murder and anger on his mind constantly, parroted throughout all of his pre-fight interviews, the idea of taking out the former heavyweight champion was all that he wanted, to hear the cries of disappointment and to see the angry, upset faces of the fans in the arena. I'm a person who likes risk in my life. All risks are victories to me. I'm a person who lives without emotion. So what emotion there is comes from these risks. Leaving Cuba and leaving my family, these things are risk and are not difficult. These things are, are easy for me. Bo had been waning in care for his career after losing his belts to Holyfield. But after beating an undefeated Herbie Hyde in sloppy fashion, it seemed the spark had been reignited. Bo wanted to prove himself to the world again for the fight against Gonzalez. His physicality had looked the best it had in years, and his energy and confidence was through the roof in the build-up to the fight. Despite knowing Gonzalez had beaten him once before, the passion for Bo was back, and it looked like it was here to stay. Gonzalez was undefeated going into the bout, and although not looking as dominant as he did in the amateurs, it was clear he was still someone to fear. He'd pummeled anyone he'd fought without a single professional fight of his, going the full 12 rounds. On the 17th of June in 1995, the night finally arrived, and it was clear who the favourite was. Bo had the crowd on his side, and that was just the way Gonzalez liked it. With no touch of gloves, it showed this fight was deeper than the sport of boxing. It was a duel of pride. They begin round one. 
And let's see if Bo wants to brawl or box. That fire that was supposed to happen. There's a free throw fight. And he'll see something entirely different tonight. Big right hand over the top by Bo. Lancing blow. Oh. Could really operate to Gonzalez's advantage. Hard right hand by Bo. Gonzalez wobbled into the ropes. To Jorge Luis Gonzalez, whoever knocked him down. But he's on the verge of going down right now. And there's a hard right by Gonzalez. But Bo comes right through it. Bo harkens back to the days of his reign as undisputed champion, performing his classic style of inside fighting. Gonzalez stays on the back foot, daring Riddick to come forward, to which Bo does with ease as he dominates Jorge with some clean jabs and a couple terrifying right hooks, wobbling Gonzalez and keeping him up against the ropes. Use his left jab, invites Bo to come on in. Pretty soon you're going to see Bo tremble a little bit with right hand. You're down a lot more than you need to be worn down. Has called a lot of punishment. He's making, in your view, mental errors that could hurt him later on. That's true. Close to the damage in these exchanges and landing at close range. Gonzalez begins to land a few jabs of his own, but Bo continues to keep Gonzalez against the ropes and starts delivering heavy left and right hooks in rapid succession. Gonzalez seems amateur in his attacking and refuses to capitalize on Bo's lack of defense. So animated in the corner for a long time, so even this 84-year-old jockey is riding this big horse. Storm, his jab is working now. Use your left, go back to the jab, it's God's gift to you. Bo just missing with the right hand over the top. Hard jab by Bo. Perfect landing of the right hand for Bo. Good job of spinning. Bobbing and weaving. There's blood coming from Gonzalez's mouth. Bo with a hard right hand to the top of the head and another to the chin. But if he doesn't finish, he's living the punishment. It's hard to turn him out. Good straight left hand by Bo. Guilty now. And Bo landing constantly to Gonzalez's head. Left jail. Bo landing at will. Gonzalez tries to counter, and Bo just thuds away. Look at the world, Riddick Bo now. And that's coming from the heavyweight champion, Bo. Riddick Bo. Another landslide scoring round for Bo. And Gonzalez is taking quite a pounding. He's in return. disqualification there and that was a stupid move the bell rings and Bo lets his anger overcome him attempting to knock Gonzalez out seconds after the round ends chasing him around the ring he risks disqualification but is let off with just a warning gathered around Gonzalez's corner to peer at him as his seconds worked on it in a fight maybe cumulatively over a career but there's very few that have suffered serious injuries. Well, hand by Gonzalez, but not a lot of snap in his punches now. Good body shot. Riddick Bow with the right hand to the ribcage. Wide open for that right hand. Fatigue continues to set in for Gonzalez as he goes from slow to stagnant, barely moving unless absolutely necessary. The crowd cheers for Bow as he continues to dominate a ghost of his past. That he has wanted for his entire life. Two. In round five, Bo landed 34 punches. Gonzalez, who landed six punches in the preceding round, only landed nine in round five. Our interpreter, Hector Garcia, says he's getting no useful advice in the corner between rounds. And for the first time, Bo shows some signs. It's like a big advantage. Ooh, right there it hand. goes. That should do it. That should do it. That's the first time Gonzalez has been down as a pro. And if he gets up from this, he fools me. Now Mills Lane doesn't bother to complete the count. Another terrific right hand shot for Riddick Bowe. And I got to tell you, Larry, I wasn't sure we'd ever see him look this good again. Just as things dare to look boring, Bo comes in with a ruinous right hook 
that sends Gonzalez to the floor in animalistic fashion. The count doesn't need to be finished as Gonzalez stays glued to the floor and Bo proceeds to celebrate a well-deserved victory after a turbulent couple of years of his career, signaling that Bo is officially back to his best self. In Bo's post-fight interview, it's clear a weight has been lifted as he defeats a figure who's plagued his mind for a decade and he seems ready to move on and continue his path to become the heavyweight champion of the world once more. Well, you know, you guys said earlier in the interview, I wanted to see the left hand pop, pop, pop. Let me get right back on the pop, pop, pop. And um, I was here to please tonight. I wanted to do it for the people. A lot of people uh, despise Jorge Gonzalez. And I wanted to, you know, uh, impress you. I wanted you to say, well, Riddick Bowe is back. He anticipates fighting Evander Holyfield for a third time to close out the trilogy and has hopes to become the champion that he should have been the first time he beat Evander. Gonzalez's post-fight interview was less positive. In an attempt to refuse giving Bo credit, Gonzalez blames the loss on him just having a bad night and hints that on a good night, he still would have won. Gonzalez half-heartedly admits that Bo had good stamina and was accustomed to 12 rounds fights due to being professional for a longer amount of time, but refuses to give any more respect than that, finally attributing part of his loss to just how much he hates Riddick Bo and how it made him too impatient in the fight. Whilst Bo would go on to have some greater success in boxing, such as defeating Holyfield in the third fight of their trilogy and gaining two controversial wins against the undefeated Andrew Golota, Riddick never reached the level of skill and domination that he did in the Gonzalez fight again, eventually retiring multiple times with a more than respectable record of 43-1. Gonzalez, on the other hand, had next to zero success after this fight, losing to the likes of Tim Witherspoon and Michael Grant by early round knockouts, he seemed to become more and more humble with every loss, before eventually retiring in 2002. Whilst Gonzalez seemingly fell off of the face of the earth after retirement, never to be seen or interviewed again, Bo has continued to stay connected to boxing, making eyebrow-raising comments about the current climate of the sport, such as how he'd beat Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua, and even flirting with the idea of coming out of retirement from time to time. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more from Boxing After Dark, feel free to leave a like and don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.